Hello everybody, my name is Ahmed Hawidi. I'm a lecturer at the Plastic and Reconstructive Surgery Department at Ain Shams University and the Director of Plastic Surgery Skills and Simulation Unit. Welcome to this e-learning session about basic suturing, su suturing techniques. By the end of this lecture, you should be able to describe different methods of wound closure, identify specification of different suture materials and propose indications of their use, describe principles of suturing, enumerate different suturing techniques, identify instruments used and know how to handle them. This will take place in the lab setting. Take simple interrupted sutures on a demo in the lab setting as well. Understand timing and importance of suture removal and perform safe suture removal on a demo at the lab setting. Background knowledge about skin layers is important in order to understand basics of surgical wound closure. From superficial to deep, skin consists of epiderms and derms and then subcutaneous fat underneath. For ideal wound healing and to avoid complications, wound closure should be performed in layers from deep to superficial using different suture materials and different suturing techniques according to the layer. Structures deep to the skin should be put in consideration before rushing into skin closure. For example, in hand wounds, structures like nerves, tendons, and vessels should be examined before simple wound closure. If any of these structures were injured, it, it will need to be repaired by a specialist in operative theater to avoid functional disabilities before any attempts for wound closure. Why wound closure is important? Wound closure is important because it's always important to close that space. Wound closure supports and strengthen the wound's edge until healing increases their tensile strengths. Also, wound closure is important to minimize the risks of bleeding and infection. Proper suturing technique is needed to ensure good results. Although sutures are the most commonly used method for wound closure, other techniques are available. Like adhesive tapes, as we can see on the hand pic on the forearm picture on the left side, or using stainless steel staples by a special device as we can see on the left side uh, photo. And tissue adhesives like Dermabond as we can see at the photo at the bottom. Skillful wound closure requires not only knowledge of proper surgical techniques, but also knowledge of the physical characteristics and properties of the suture materials and needles. There is wide variety in suture materials. Suture materials can be absorbable or non-absorbable. They can be natural or synthetic. They can be monofilament or multifilament. Absorbable sutures are used in sites where stitch removal is impossible, example, in the subcutaneous tissue. In contrary, non-absorbable sutures are used when stitch removal is possible, like stitching the skin. Monofilament material resists infection better, but has significant memory, which make them less handy. In contrary, 
multifilament materials, although can easily host bacterial spores, but they have less memory, which make them more handy. The most commonly used absorbable suture material is polyglycolic acid, or vicryl, which is synthetic multifilament material. The most commonly used non-absorbable suture materials are silk, which is natural multifilament material, and polypropylene or proline, which is synthetic monofilament material. As regarding the size of suture material, the United States Pharmacopeia classification system was established in 1937 for standardization and comparison of suture materials. Suture size refers to the diameter of the suture strand and is denoted as zeros. The more zeros characterizing a suture size, the smaller the resultant strand diameter. For example, 4O is larger than 5O. The smaller the suture, the less the tensile strength of the strand. Much of the process regarding suture selection depends on surgeon training and preference. Aesthetic concerns are at a premium in the anatomic regions of the head and neck. In contaminated tissues, we prefer monofilament suture material rather than multi-filament. Multi, multi Regarding suture size, optimal suture size is generally the smallest size necessary to achieve the desired tension-free closure. If wound tension is high, smaller diameter sutures may actually injure tissues by cutting through them. Therefore, closely match the tensile strengths of the suture and tissue. It is important to understand different structures of needles used in suturing in order to select the appropriate needle for each tissue. You need to know different types of needle points and different types of needle bodies. Although many point types exist, however, Basically, there are two types, two main types, which are either cutting needle or, or cutting point needle or taper point or round needle. Cutting needle is used for tough structures in order to penetrate easily, example skin. Round needle is used for friable structures to avoid pull-through, example, oral mucosa. Regarding body types, mainly there are, there are either straight needles or curved needles. How to identify specifications of suture material from the cover? By looking at the suture material cover, you should be able to identify the following. The manufacturer, the expiry date to the suture material, the type of suture material, the size of suture material, the type of needle body, and the type of needle point. All, all this will be demonstrated in the face-to-face -face lab setting. There are different types of suture techniques, like simple interrupted sutures, simple running sutures, vertical or horizontal mattress sutures, inverted subdermal suture, and running subcuticular sutures. However, in this instance, we're going to concentrate on the most simple and important technique, which is simple interrupted sutures. Simple interrupted sutures has many advantages. It is easy to place have greater tensile strengths, 
have less potential for causing wound edema and impaired skin circulation allow to make adjustments as needed to properly align wound edges. It has some disadvantages like the length of time required for the placement, unlike the continuous suturing. Also, the greater risk for cross-hatched marks or railway marks that can be left if the suture are not removed in the appropriate time. Removal of stitches in the appropriate time is important to avoid complications. If sutures remove too early, this might cause wound dehiscence. If sutures removed late, this might lead to stitch sinus or might leave an ugly scar like railway scars. Average timing for suture removal is different according to the body part as following. Sutures in the face should be removed on around the sixth day post-operative. Sutures in scalp should be removed around the tenth day. Suture in hands should be removed around 14th day after stitching. Clinical assessment, however, is crucial before removal of sutures to ensure appropriate wound healing. At the lab setting, you should be able to identify basic surgical instruments used for skin closure. They are needle holder, tooth forceps, surgical scissors, and scalpel. We are going to see this in the face-to-face -face session. Thank you for your attention.